Hello, hello, Islanders and global viewers. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Your support is well appreciated. Today, we're going to be making for you some sorrel drink, Jamaican style sorrel drink. It's very popular at Christmas time. It's a strong tradition. And so today, we're going to be showing you just how to make this one to share with your guests and family and friends throughout the holiday season. Stay with us. Okay, guys, here we are now. And these are the ingredients that we'll be using to make our Jamaican sorrel drink. As I mentioned earlier, it's quite popular at Christmas time, but these days can be had throughout the year based on farming uh, practices. You can have it sometimes throughout the year, but at Christmas time, it is a must in just about every household in Jamaica and across other Caribbean islands as well. Now, at this time, I want to tell you, this here is the soil. As you can see, it's quite deep red. You see how beautiful it is? Wow, look at that red, rich color. This is the color I like. You have some lighter red, of course, but I like this color. Now it grows kind of on a stem, and if you will, has a seed in the middle, which they would remove, and then you get this part of it. Okay, and that's the part that we'll be boiling today. Today, I'm going to be using two pounds of sorrel with just about two ounces of ginger. We have the ginger here. We have cinnamon leaves here. Uh, just about mm, four to six leaves. We have some pimento berries or allspice as it's called. You can use just about a teaspoon or we said two and a half dozen seeds. This one is some rice. It's like about a tablespoon of rice, regular white rice. I'll explain that to you in a little while. And this is a sugar, brown sugar. By tradition, we use brown sugar, but of course, if you have white sugar, you can go right ahead and use that. Here we have the all famous Ray and the nephew rum. So, you know, rum is something that is optional as well, depending on your own taste or belief. Because some persons, for religious reasons, they don't take uh, uh, alcohol. So, at Christmas time, they're also free to make their sorrow without alcohol. Traditionally, red label wine is also used uh, in the sorrel, but I didn't have any red label wine today, so I'm just gonna go right ahead with what I do have. And usually, I'm not so fussy about the red label wine. And the rum, it's really to show you because I'll not be using it in my recipe, but it's just to show you that you can use it if you so desire. Now, all these ingredients. I'm going to be preparing for you now. The sorrel, we're going to have to wash it thoroughly. And I'm going to be washing it in the sink here so that we can have it, the water just running through it in that way. You know that any little particles left in, in here can be removed, okay? The ginger will be just beating it up in small pieces or you can just blend it or grate it however you like, but you wanna just get it crushed by whatever means you like. All right, so now we're gonna do the washing. On to the sink for the washing. So you wanna just wash it thoroughly here, using your hands as well to just rub through it and ensure that, as I said before, no particles are left in it, yes. Okay, there we go. As I said, you want to just wash these through properly. Moving them around. And showing that the water is going right through it. Washing it properly. I mentioned that I'm using two pounds. This is not two pounds. It's just, uh, this is half of what I'm using, but I've divided it in two parts to wash it thoroughly. And then I'll put it into the pot. All right, now we're just combining everything in this pot here. And we're gonna fill it up with some water. 
Now, once the water gets to the point where it covers it, you know that's enough. All you need to do is get the water to cover it, right? You don't need to really measure if it's three or four cup, any amount of soil that you're using. Your aim is to just cover it. Once the water comes up to just where it covers it, you can stop there. All right, just filling up this pot. Now, some persons prefer to bring the water to a boil and then they put in the other ingredients, that, such as the soil and everything all at once, once they are boiled up the water. Please don't come for me in the comments. This is a way that I am accustomed to doing it in my household. Every household has a different little way of doing it, a different little twist to it. So this is the way I'm accustomed to doing it, doing it and uh, this is the way that I'm sharing with you. Okay. Okay, guys, if you can see, the water is really just barely covered it now. So we're going to just move it right onto the stove. Chopping that ginger. Okay, we're gonna do. now we're adding all the spices in ginger no. pimento berries or all spice or cinnamon leaves all washed of course so I want to just get them a little under the water and then we're just gonna cover this now and watch it carefully turn the stove on and we will cover it now we have the rice rice with just about a tablespoon of rice white rice this is used to give it a little bit of body and ferment when it's fermenting it will all come together really nicely just cover it and watch it carefully until once it's coming to a boil you're not going to be boiling this remember you just at this time you're just drawing the soil I would say we're just going to draw it right so you're going to watch it carefully as it comes to a boil just about to start boiling up you can see the little bubbles coming you just turn it off and leave it there and as a matter of fact if you leave that cover on and it boils up too much it will boil right over so you want to be careful and pay keen attention to it if you turn the stove up high enough in you know just medium to high what you will find is that within just about 10 minutes it should start boiling you see the little bubbles coming and you just turn it off right there okay we're back here now in the 10 minutes to see what's really going on mm, and there you can see wow Mmm, that is smelling so good. I smell the ginger, I smell the cinnamon, I smell all these spices coming through. And as you can see, it's steaming hot now. You see that? If you look closely, you'll be able to see that it is beginning to boil. Some really tiny bubbles forming around there. So it's time to turn this off, cover it nicely. And leave it here we're gonna just leave it right here overnight to steep so that all that flavor can be released into the liquid all right and then we'll have our nice sorry ready to be sweetened cover it right up now and leave it here overnight in the morning we'll come and get ready for this one adding the sweeteners and then it should be ready to go Oh, well, 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 guys, we are back here now, 24 hours later, to check on this beauty, see what has been happening. Here we go. You see that? We have, I had a little white piece of napkin that I just put right here because I wanted to ensure that I locked in all the aroma in my sorrel. Didn't want anything escaping, and we have a little 
vent here made in the cover so wow look at that color oh so rich this is jamaican style sorry look at it mm -hmm. oh yes can you see how red this is it is rich it is it is it is and the smell it smells so potent yes smells really rich see the cinnamon leaves all well simmered in and i can smell just smell it like it's almost as if i'm tasting it the ginger i can smell everything coming through all right we're gonna just go right ahead now and just strain off the soil now separate it from the drink and then we sweeten it for you all right so guys here we are i'm going to just pour this soil into this pot but i'm using a strainer at the top put it in a colander because i have a big pot of soil here so i want a little extra support for it so i put it in the colander and rest it right on top of the pot and then the strainer on top of that everything properly washed guys can't stress the importance of hygiene enough so here we go now ready steady go wow yes 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 just like i expected a little bit of a splash so i did it in the sink i think we're filling up now so i'm gonna just stop right there what's left in the pot well just a little is left in the pot a little juice is left in it mm -hmm. but we're gonna mix that portion that is in the sink now but bef before we move into mixing this guys i should tell you or share with you a few important facts. Sorrel, as we know it in Jamaica, is also called Agua de Jamaica in some Latin American countries. In fact, in Mexico for sure, when I visited Mexico, I was greeted with that drink upon arrival. They said, oh, we have here for you some Agua de Jamaica. Of course, I didn't know what it was, but by the time it came out and I tasted it and I saw it, I said, oh, this is sorrel. So I was able to do that cultural exchange. Right, so it's called Agua de Jamaica. It's also known as the hibiscus flower, right? So it's a red hibiscus, known also as red hibiscus in some places in Asia, all right? And this plant here, it, it is highly antioxidant. It has very good antioxidant qualities. It's a good health drink, not only tastes delicious and refreshing, but it is packed with healthy, nutrients that you need main one being antioxidants okay just sharing that with you and we move right over to mixing it now but i wanted to know too that all of this don't doesn't have to go to waste you can there's still a little more liquid left in it just a little and you can use that to make your glaze for your ham you can also use it in uh, muffins so there are different ways you can utilize this part of it that is left okay all right okay guys so here we are now we're ready to add our sugar to this mix we've strained it off properly and just have the liquid left now for you yes see that look at it see how dark and rich and lovely it looks all right so now we're just gonna go ahead and add the sugar i mentioned to you earlier that you can add wine usually in jamaica they use red label wine a lot that's a traditional red label wine that is using it as well as rum but I'm having some visitors and they don't take alcohol, so I've opted to just leave the alcohol out of the equation. As well as I usually don't fuss too much about putting the alcohol in it. All right, but if it's your preference, please feel free to go ahead and add it according to your taste, all right? But you know when you add alcohol to it, you should ensure that, you know, children don't really partake of it because, you know, alcohol for children, not so well recommended. All right, here's our two crew cups of sugar that we're adding in now. And let me tell you something. This sorrel here has a little tiny flavor to it. So after it's boiled, you know, sometimes it takes a good amount of sugar. So we're just adding the two cups first. And then after that, we'll see, you taste it and see how it is. If it's okay or we want to add some more. 
and, and I said before, you can add the sugar according to your taste as well as according to your own health concerns. If you have, uh, you know, any health concerns that makes it less than recommendable for you to have sugar, then you know you can have it just as is. When I had it in Mexico, it was no sugar called Agua de Amica. Tasted it like a crown water, you know. All right, don't I have that sugar dissolved nicely in it? I can just smell it. It smells like wine. Because I tell you some things. This sorrel is kind of like wine, you know. When you pour this off and set it aside. In fact, if you put alcohol in it, you can leave it off the fridge for, you know, for a few weeks. Maybe two weeks or so. But if you don't add the alcohol, you want to put it in the fridge right away. But when you come back to it, it's as if it starts to, you know, ferment. And so my visitors are coming in just over a week. And so that's why I want to make it a little in advance. All right, I'm gonna taste it now and Oh my days, this is lovely. That's it, hit the spot. The ginger is strong enough and the salt is strong in it. Yes, that's just about it. I'm adding nothing more to it at this point. I think it is ready for pouring off. Now let me share a little thing with you now. A little bit of tradition before I even pour off my sorrel into the bottle. It's kind of better to put it in glass, uh, a glass container if you if you have it, because sorrel is kind of strong. Like I said, it's like it has a kind of wine thing to it. So look, generally we store our alcohol in this. What do you know about this? Tell me what you know about this bottle here. See that? That is an original glass bottle from a red label wine bottle you know it holds half a gallon and usually we put it in the fridge with the soil and store it for a good while when you open it you hear pop sometimes when it starts fermenting all right so i'm gonna pour that off now and serve some up in a glass and that's it we hope that you enjoyed this recipe so far or you have been enjoying this recipe so far and that you'll be trying it out this christmas okay okay guys there you have it your very own jamaican authentic sorrel drink traditional christmas drink whether you have it chilled or very chilled or over ice it's your choice season's greetings thank you for watching this video if you like it remember to give us a thumbs up share and subscribe until next time ciao